Hey everyone, Moms Against Medical Bullying. I wanted to talk about the public spectacle that is happening with this COVID shot. Um, So basically, the conclusion that I've come to is that, you know, whether these vaccines actually have the components of what the COVID vaccine is supposed to be in them or not, you know, even if it's just saline, it's not the point. I think the point is that this is a sacred ritual happening right now, the sacred ritual and confession of faith. Hold on, buddy. A uh, public, a public confession of faith in this scientism cult in vaccination. So yeah, basically, this is a big public ritual ceremony. So every person that you see, you know, get this shot. Um, in public on, you know, live TV or what have you. So, yeah, um, it's a public spectacle. It's theater. And I'm going to go to an article here. Oh, did I? Okay, here it is. Um, so yeah. public ritual. Okay. Wow, military affairs. That's interesting. Down to public ritual. The study of ritual performed in communal life encompasses the wealth of world history and cosmology, yet few linguistic or conceptual categories of analysis address fully the diversity of ritual as an enactment of belief in the divine, inclusive of the mythologies of magic associated with the liminal moments of human experience. For modern societies, the historical celebration of ritual as a dramatic enactment of the numinous or sacred reveals a persistent trait among world communities to transform human existence in order to experience sacred presence. To this end, the stylized adaption of religion, foremost for the Western world, is predicated on a richly variegated model of ceremonial systems that are centered on the formalized invocation of symbols, discourse, and gestures. So yeah, like um, the masks and the white coats and the uniforms. Uh, Please stop. Okay. Combined the sensory experience innate in ritual performance extends to the history of communities, institutions, and the rise of the pre-modern and the modern state. This is what we're doing. The enactment of ritual, both political and religious, also touches on the history of law and the rise of modern theories of government predicated on precepts of moral obligation and the duty of obedience to ordained rulership that have historically been enjoined on individual members of civic communities. Now, I will will admit the, the language you're using here is a bit complicated, I think, for the point that they're making, but, but yeah... Um, Since the 19th century, the subject of ritual has been the focus of a considerable corpus of historical, philosophical, ecclesiastical, economic, and legal research. In the latter third of the 20th century, significant contributions were also achieved through the application models of social and cultural anthropology that link the transmission of oral, written, and visual texts. The discipline of art history, specifically the study of iconology, iconology, has further refined the implications of the sacred within the emerging loci of secular national histories. Among the luminaries who have contributed to 20th and 21st century research on ritual are, and I'm not going to name all names because I don't feel like reading the names, <laughs> Each has approached the modern study of ritual with reference to the liminality of human experience. Foucault and Bourdieu have addressed concerns of communities to protect civic interests from nonconformist intrusion. 
A fourth contribution also informs the modern study of public ritual. The history of ritual violence, a trait of pre-modern communities, has affected the transformation in theories of resistance to authorized authority, as well as the imposition of penal practices that now characterize the modern state. The ritualized forms of violence and murder that have been enacted against minorities in the 20th century reveals the critical paradox of limbing out a theory of ritual as a codified form of social communication. Ritual practices have promoted the consolidation of human resources without supporting a universal model of human rights predicated on notions of diversity and tolerance. So I'm not, I'm going to stop there, but this is very long, this encyclopedia article on public ritual. Well, let's see here. It's probably some other interesting but this is what I believe is occurring right now, which is rich public ritual ceremony happening <coughs> for the induction of this, um, you know, let's see here, induction. What's that mean specifically? The process or action of bringing about or giving rise to something. So, yeah. I don't know. The induction of this way of life with these masks. and Hey, stop destroying that. Oh, this is another interesting one. Social practices, rituals, and festive events. Social practices, rituals, and festive events are habitual activities that structure the lives of communities and groups that are shared by, shared by and relevant to many of their members. <clears throat> so this, it's like, I, I made a video about this a while ago, but just that we're all born into a cult. This world system that we live in is a cult. <laughs> And so that's why when you learn the truth about vaccinations and other things, people that are still in the cult, they don't even realize they're in a cult, but they are in a cult. Um, that's why they get mad at you and angry at with, with you because you're not um, sharing the ideas of the cult any longer. So you have to be outcasted from the cult and you have to be humiliated. So anyways, they are significant because they reaffirm the identity of those who practice them as a group or a society, see, and whether performed in public or private, are closely linked to important events. Social, ritual, and festive practices may help to mark the passing of the seasons, events in the agricultural calendar, or stages of a person's life. They are closely linked to a community's worldview and perception of its own history and memory. They vary from small gatherings to large-scale social celebrations and commemorations. Each of these subdomains is vast, but there is also a great deal of overlap between them. Rituals and festive events often take place at special times and places and remind a community of aspects of its worldview and history. I mean, it's, this totally fits what's going on, you know? In some cases, access to rituals may be restricted to certain members of the community. Initiation rites, there we go, initiation rites, and burial ceremonies are two such examples. Some festive events, however, are a key part of public life and are open to all members of society. Okay, let's see. Social practices shape everyday life and are familiar to all members of the community, even if not everybody participates in them. Distinctive social practices that are especially relevant to a community and help reinforce a sense of identity and continuity with the past are given priority in the 2003 convention. For example, in many communities, greeting ceremonies are informal, while in others, they are more elaborate and ritualistic, acting as a marker of identity for the society. Similarly, practices of giving and receiving gifts may range from casual events to formal arrangements with significant political, 
economic or social meaning. Let's see. Um, I feel like when they do this vaccination thing in public, like, yeah, they just think how wonderful they are. And um, it's also paying homage to the whole history and, and the whole um, fraudulent history of vaccination. And I think also that when they do this public vaccination, they want to also reaffirm the, the society's faith in doctors and in in scientism and what we call medicine what what they've called medicine um while they blacklist all other types of um medicine and healing practices so yeah we you know we for certain are born into a cult and there is uh no doubt about that um what else did i want to read here Yeah, I guess that's all about all that I want to read on that. So yeah, I'll just um, leave it there. Public rituals. Public ritual ceremonies. And, uh, you know, I was just thinking today that, you know, I, I think it's funny that the government thinks that they can push their medical philosophies on us um and you know I would feel strange trying to tell somebody what I think that they needed to do for for their health you know and um they should really feel awkward about what they're doing to us because it's wrong and I was just thinking the other day, like, I never, I, I didn't sign up for the government to be my doctor. Like, I didn't sign up to get health care advice from the government. And so that's not the government's place. They only have one purpose, literally one purpose, and that is to protect our God-given inalienable rights and, you know, rights to make our own choices, but here they are trying to take those rights away, which they can't because they didn't give them. But they're trying to bulldoze those rights by telling us that they're our masters and they're going to tell us, you know, how, what to put in our bodies and how to take care of our health because they're just a cult. And if 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 you feel or, you know, if anyone feels the need to bully people, that means you're in a cult because <laughs> cults bully and cults humiliate people. And so... That's that.